My name is Vera Maria Santo. I am 25 years old by the time you guys are seeing this. My birthday is this weekend. Um, so I am a junior level theology student at Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady. I'm originally from Mobile, Alabama. I actually moved here for school. Um, and back when I was back home in Alabama, I grew up in Alabama my entire life. Back home in Alabama, uh, I was a really prideful kid. Um, I don't know if any of you guys can relate. Um, I was very much so um, always trying to get people to think I was cool, um, which was not um, always a fruitful uh, task <laughs> to be a, a part of or to uh, engage in. Um, but I was, I was always trying to get people to think that I was cool. And one of the ways that you could do that, at least back when I was young, is by knowing other cool people. Um, I don't know if you've ever been like, oh yeah, I know this person, so I must be cool. Or yeah, oh, I know Justin Bieber. Or oh, I know this person. Or oh, I know this person. Uh, to make yourself seem cool and kind of hype yourself up in that way. But I used to do that all the time. And granted, I knew none of these people, right? I didn't, I've never been in contact with these people. I've never spoken to these people. Um, I probably don't know any of these, any money that these people know. Um, and it's fascinating how much we think we know people um, just because we watch them or just because we hear things about them. Like, I don't know if you've ever felt like you knew a celebrity or felt like you knew um, or even told somebody that you knew a person when really you've never had a conversation with them, you've never spoken to them. Um, they probably don't even know your first name or your face or anything about you. Um, but you know something of them, right? But you don't actually know them. I feel like we get caught in this trap a great deal when it comes to Jesus, right? When it comes to the church, when it comes to our faith, um, we have heard Bible verses spit at us all the time. We grew up in church. We go to mass on Sundays, mostly because our family makes us, but we go anyway. And we hear all these stories about Jesus and we just, we think we know this man. But do we? Do we actually know who he is? And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how to grow in a deeper relationship with Christ. And one of the ways that I want to do that is talk to you guys a little bit about how I came to know Christ. And I say come, came to know Christ very loosely because in all reality, it's still happening. It's still a process. It's something that I'm going through and experiencing every single day, every moment of every day. And it's something where I get to grow in this relationship with this man um, who should, in all honesty, be everything to me. And in this particular way, um, we go through this passage in the Gospel of John here, where y'all are studying in y'all's session, it comes from John 14, where Thomas says to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way, right? How can we know the way to heaven? How can we know the way to God, right? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. Henceforth, you know him and have seen him. This is beautiful language. This is an intensely beautiful passage and one that I feel like we can miss um, the deeper meaning or even a, a beautiful surface level meaning. Of, of what it means to genuinely know Christ. So in my own life, um, again, I grew up a, an athlete. Um, I was a multiple time junior Olympian in track and fields. Um, and I became known 
as the track athlete. I became known as that girl. I was the girl that was fast for a girl. She was faster than all the boys. She was this, she was that. And it's amazing how much I was known for things that really had nothing to do with my identity, right? At the end of the day, I could break my leg and then not be able to run track anymore. And eventually, actually, I had suffered shin splints um, chronically for five years to the point where when I turned 18 and I was offered multiple scholarships to run track and field at the collegiate level, I couldn't. <laughs> I just couldn't. I was in so much pain all the time to where I was in a way stripped of that identity. I couldn't be known as that anymore because it was something that I didn't participate in. It was something that wasn't attached to me or to my life or to my life experience anymore. So what was I to do? Who was I to be, right? And it's amazing how we might know Jesus as uh, things that he did or stories that we've heard and not really come to know him on a personal level. And one of the ways that people realize that I wasn't just the track athlete or I wasn't just the sprinter, I wasn't just the soccer player, I wasn't just the poet or I wasn't just this or that is people came into relationship with me. They talked to me. They realized that, wow, she's a lot more than meets the eye. But you wouldn't know that if you never spoke to me, if you just watched things that I did or you heard things about me from other people that may or may not be true. So in this developing of a personal relationship, one of the most fundamental things is coming into relationship with the person. And one of the ways that we do that with Jesus is we do that through the sacraments, through these things, these beautiful gifts that he has left us in order to make himself manifest to us. One of my favorite things to do, and I try to do this once a week, is I go to confession. Now, it might be scary to go to confession, and as someone who didn't make a valid confession until I was maybe 17, 18 years old, it's scary. I know there's probably things that you think might drive you away from Christ, may, uh, may make you think that Jesus doesn't want to come anywhere near you doesn't really want to know you because if he did know you, he wouldn't like what it is that he found out or what it is that he discovered. But I assure you, God knows you in ways that you, in ways that you can't even imagine, in ways in which you don't even know yourself. And he wants you to come into deeper knowledge of him. And one of the ways that I think that this is so beautiful is when we come to know Jesus, we don't fear him as much anymore. We don't fear approaching him. We don't fear being close to him. Oftentimes, I think we're afraid of things that we don't know. We're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of the dark. We're afraid of absence. We're afraid of emptiness because we don't know what to expect. We don't know what's there. We don't understand. And when our relationship with God is empty, we're afraid. When our relationship with God is just us being in a room with a stranger. When we go to mass and we look at the consecrated host and we're just like, who are you? I don't know you. Being in a room full of strangers, it's uncomfortable. And rightly so. But here and now, we can come into deeper relationship with Jesus by the reading of the scriptures, by participating in the sacraments, by coming to know him on a personal, on a deep, and on an intimate level. 
by coming into relationship, by drawing into personal relationship. Not relationship based off of somebody else. Like, oh, this person said this and I want to get to know Jesus through this person. Like, no, it doesn't have to come through a third party. It doesn't have to come through your teachers. It can. It can start there, but it shouldn't end there. We need to come deeper into relationship with Jesus on our own. By practicing the presence of God, by asking him to be, become present to us by asking him to come deeper into relationship with us. And a lot of that you'll realize once you start asking these questions, Jesus, come into deeper relationship with me, is you'll realize yourself opening up. Because Jesus is already there, right? Jesus has never left. Jesus never leaves us. And we'll realize as we invite Jesus closer into relationship, the more we're able to open up to him, the more we're able to embrace him, the more we're able to experience him in the scriptures and in the sacraments. And this is what it takes. And part of this is going to be personal prayer. And this is one of the things that I love speaking to young people about because I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions about what prayer is. Prayer is you simply saying, Lord Jesus, here I am. Speak to me. Be in relationship with me. You'll realize as you get older, um, if you watch older couples, sometimes they don't even need to speak to each other. They'll just be on the porch in their little rocking chairs, books in hand, sitting next to each other, just being in relationship without having to say a word. And sometimes our prayer is like that. When you don't have the words to say, just be with Jesus. He comes closer into relationship with you when you do that. When you just come into his presence, at any point while you're driving down the street with your parents, while you're at soccer practice, while you're at dance practice, while you're in class, while you're washing the dishes, he comes to us and he makes his presence known. And he wants personal relationship with us, but it has to be us that invites him closer in, that invites him into deeper intimacy. That's welcoming the scriptures into our lives. That is welcoming the sacraments into our lives. That is welcoming the very presence of Jesus into our lives. And it can literally be as simple as, Jesus, you are welcome here. Be with me. You can make that a prayer. Brother Lawrence in his book, Practice of the Presence of God, is he said he was pleased when he could pick up a piece of straw off the ground for love of God. Picking up straw off the ground can be an invitation into intimate relationship with Jesus, if you make it so. The simplest things can be an invitation to personal relationship with Jesus. So in this class, I invite each and every one of you, even now, if you'll join me in a simple prayer, Close your eyes and just say, Jesus, you are welcome here. You are welcome into the space with me. I welcome you here into this class, into my very life, and into my life as I leave this place. And I ask you to never leave me, to be with me always in intimacy, in friendship, in true charity, in love. Lord, I ask you to make me a saint because what is being a saint but being a friend, being in close personal relationship with you. So God bless each and every one of you and I look forward to being in heaven with all of you.